Hi, so we made a video called How to Generate Electricity Out of a Rubber Band, and in that video we made this thing, which is basically a plastic cradle, and on one end is a motor, and we strung a rubber band and wound that rubber band up and let it go, and it generated a little bit of electricity, which is kind of cool, and it was a fun experiment. But there was something happening in there that I want to point out to you, because you might have missed it. So I'm going to give you a close-up of this. Okay, so here's the cradle we made in the video that I mentioned, and I've replaced the rubber bands with this thick piece of rubber tube, just so that you can see everything more easily. Then we have a turning handle on this side, and we have a motor on that side, and I've jammed a screwdriver in the hook so that the motor can't actually turn while we turn this. So as we turn this, what happens is the tube begins to twist, and you can see the twist in the tube there. It's twisting up like a bit of rope. Now as that twist increases, then that happens right there. What we're getting there is a coil on a coil. And if I continue to do that, that whole stretch of rubber will turn into that coil upon a coil and obviously stretch more. Now this coiling is called supercoiling. And as we continue to turn, that coil will then lay another coil so we get further supercoiling. Now this supercoiling is an ordered state. So in the original bit of pipe, all those molecules were absolutely all over the place like a load of fibres. As we began to twist it, then those fibres lined themselves up, getting more and more ordered. Then when we get supercoiling, we get a second degree of order. If we get the next layer of coils, we have a third degree. Now this change in order takes energy. Obviously I'm putting that energy in by turning the handle. But as this forms like this, the excess energy is given out as heat. So this is a much more ordered form and it gives out heat. If we leave that alone to cool down to ambient temperature, so it's the same temperature as the room, so it began as the same temperature of the room, it's now got hotter. If we leave it to cool down until it's the same temperature of the room again, and then we let that go, it will uncoil. Now, we use that uncoiling to drive the motor and generate some electricity, but something else has happened. That order that we put into that system by turning that handle and making all the fibres line the same way and then creating the supercoils, all of that order has disappeared. And because that order has disappeared and it took heat was given out when we wound it up, heat is now taken in in this more disordered state and this material has become colder. So what we've got here is a strip of rubber held in this vice. And what I'm going to do is point a thermometer at it. And if I hold that thermometer there, we see that the temperature is 22.8. And when I pull the rubber up, it jumps up to 26.5. I'll let it go. And then it goes back down again to 23. Actually, it's going colder. So if I'd waited for that to cool to room temperature and let it go, it would have dropped by the same amount, but lower than room temperature. Isn't that fascinating? Now that effect is called the Meccano caloric effect. And there's a whole group of these caloric effects. And so you get an electrocaloric effect if you uh, apply an electrical field, a magnetocaloric effect if you apply a magnetic field. And this is the Meccano caloric effect. There are two types. There's this one that we're demonstrating, which is called the elastocaloric um, effect. And there's also one called the barocaloric effect, where you apply pressure with the liquid. But they are mechanical systems, whereas the magnetic and the electrical are fields. So if we apply a field to a material, we'll get the same heating and cooling that we just saw. If we apply a mechanical force to some materials, we get that heating and cooling effect. Now, that effect is absolutely fascinating. Now, I was drawn to um, applied science. He made a fridge out of this, where he basically stretched the rubber bands in the same way that we did with that strip of rubber in the vice. And he used that to make a fridge where he got a degree or so of difference. I had a wheel that was eccentric and it stretched and closed the bands and then he heated and cooled the inside of a box with it. It wasn't terribly efficient and it would take quite a while to actually do that job. But these caloric effects are actually the subject of a great deal of research. So if you want some more materials that will do this, well, natural rubber, obviously, is a really good one. That's what we've been using, thick latex rubber. 
also elastic bands, which is what applied silence use, so used. I apologise. Uh, so rubber will do a really good job, but oddly enough, so will nylon. If you watch the video on artificial muscles, where we use a bit of nylon and we twist it around in that supercoiling, and you take that coil of nylon, it'll retain its coil shape, and stretch that, you'll get a caloric effect, a mechanical caloric effect of quite a deal of significance. So nylon will do it, rubber will do it, um, this stuff will do it. This is um, dimethyl siloxane. You probably know it better as silicon seal. Silicon seal, once it's dried, will do exactly the same thing. So you can use silicon sealant to get the same stuff. So there are a whole bunch of readily available materials to see what you can do with this caloric effect. If you want some other materials, and I'll put this title in the description, there's a good paper called Novel Mechanocaloric Materials for Solid State Cooling Applications. It gives a whole host of idea of materials that you can use to experiment with to do cooling, because this little setup can actually be used to make a, a fridge. And as I say, applied science made, I don't want to be rude, but a not very good fridge. And the reason for that is that stretching and contracting all by itself only has a degree or two of difference. We got quite a good degree of difference because we used this stuff, which is a non-natural latex. It's Plasti Dip, as it happens. Plasti Dip has quite a large uh, mechanocaloric effect, and we got quite a few degrees just from stretching it. But the really cool thing, pun intended, is that if you stretch it like we did with this bit of rubber, and then we introduce supercoiling, it amplifies the effect, and you can get 10 to 15 degrees difference. That's really significant. Now, I didn't do this. This is based on another paper. Again, I'll put the title in, called Torsional Refrigeration by Twisted Coiled and Supercoiled Fibres. So those coiling up of the fibres will intensify that cooling effect. So we can actually genuinely create a fridge rather than something that just gets a degree of difference. This would be a real refrigeration unit that you could chill your beer with. Anyway, I wanted to go through that with you because it is a fascinating property of elastic coils. And we took that elastic coil that we did in the simple experiment and basically what we did was observe it a little bit more. Because we looked at the double coiling effect, we saw that effect but probably didn't notice it. But when you look at that coiling effect and you take its temperature, then you'll get that Meccano uh, caloric being very obvious to you. And so it's about taking what you did and having a slightly better look at it and going on from there. So if you think about the steps I took, we did a simple experiment that was just fun. And it should be just fun and dead easy to do and dead easy to replicate. Then we had a closer look at it and had a think about it. Then we had to look on the internet for research about what coiled up rubber would actually do. And we came up with rubber fridges. Had a little bit of a look around rubber fridges about what other materials might do that job. And came up with some papers suggesting materials to us. Tried those materials and then looked for other papers on application. So those are the steps that we went through to look at this effect and making fridges from rubber bands. Anyway, I thought I would share that with you, both the, little, the experiments that we've done and the process that we went through. I hope it was of interest, and thank you very much for watching.